I recently installed what I like to refer to as the Banks Power Trio system in my 2019 F450. System consists of a Derringer power programmer with iDash gauges, a Ram Air cold air intake system, and their Pedal Monster throttle sensitivity uh, adjustment system. Uh, to house it all, I put in a A-pillar 2-gauge system as well. I installed these units on my uh, truck right before my trip to Florida. Um, earlier this year, I hauled my 20,000-pound Jayco Seismic 4113 fifth wheel down there. And I have another trip scheduled next week, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to see if this makes any difference uh, both in hauling uh, characteristics as well as uh, fuel economy. So uh, we're going to log all our miles again and uh, take some detailed notes and we'll see how it does. Like last time, I got my tire minder A1A hooked up. Got all the uh, tire pressures set to the factory standard settings. So we got 90 up front and 80 on all the rest of them, or plus or minus a pound. That's not going to make a difference. So, tires are ready to roll. This morning we got up at 4 a.m., got everything disconnected and hooked up. And as you can see, it is now 10 to 5 and we're ready to roll out of here. She's looking good. Let's get on the road. This is some crazy weather we're having here in northern Illinois. We got uh, December 15th here and it's 55 degrees. So a little bit uh, unusual. Well, the first leg of the trip down here was a little interesting. Um, after my stop at the rest stop there, about five miles down the road, I started getting an alarm on my tire pressure monitoring system telling me that I was uh, losing air on my inside rear dually tire on the truck. So, got to the nearest exit, pulled over, and sure enough, uh, picked up something and it punctured a hole right in the middle of it. So, that TPMS sensor saved me a whole bunch of money right there. If uh, I wouldn't have noticed that uh, tire had lost air. The outside one could have failed, and those tires are about, uh, I believe, 450, 500 bucks a piece. So that tire pressure sensor monitor paid for itself right there. Highly recommend if you guys are pulling a trailer of any size that you have uh, TPMS either built into your vehicle and added onto the trailer, or in my case, truck didn't have the TPMS, so I had to put uh, 12 sensors onto it. Highly, highly recommend it. Can't tell you, stress it enough. Then uh, the rest of the trip was uh, pretty uneventful. Uh, some interesting results with the uh, Derringer. I found that I was actually getting worse mileage. Uh, when I started out, I was running it on six for maximum power. Uh, I found that it was really, really helpful when you're accelerating, uh, getting onto the highway, you know, getting up to speeds and merging into traffic. But um, I saw that it was constantly adding power, even on the flatlands, where I really wasn't having a problem before. So mileage was uh, actually probably about a mile to the gallon less than I was getting without it. I decided then, uh, about halfway through the trip, that I would only turn it on and since it's a uh, it's an adjust on the fly system I would dial it up when I was getting onto the highways I would dial it up when I was uh, going uphill in the mountains and uh, then I started running it uh, just on the stock setting while I was cruising down the highway just doing 70 miles an hour and that seemed to help a lot that gave me the uh, extra power I needed oh we got a little excitement going on here <laughs> so it seemed to give me the extra power that I needed when I needed it and the shift on the fly or the adjust on the fly is nice it uh, doesn't require that you stop to make the change 
So I think I'm going to use that strategy all the way home and see uh, what kind of uh, mileage we get and see if that's a, an improvement. Uh, definitely needed on the six setting when you're going through uh, the mountains there, climbing the hills. It really added some extra power and I wasn't uh, downshifting uh, into fifth or even fourth gear at all. Uh, fifth gear I think I hit once on one of the big hills uh, in Georgia. But other than that, beautiful. All right, enough of my blabbering. You guys came here for numbers, so let's look at numbers. Uh, like I said, I have recorded every single fill up I've had since I've uh, owned the truck. And uh, so I'm not just uh, pulling these numbers randomly out of my butt. I got the data to prove it. This is what the trips looked like. All right, and uh, the first column, we got my first trip going to Florida where I had everything stock, towing the toy hauler. The second trip uh, with the banks is in the second column there in the after column. And um, that was uh, towing the toy hauler. A couple things that are a little bit different were that I was hauling more weight on this second trip. I probably had an extra 500 or so pounds in there compared to the first time. So that's going to affect it a little bit. Um, lifetime average mile per gallon on the truck, um, that's including towing campers and everything, uh, has been 11 miles to the gallon. Uh, other mixed averages is, uh, everything other than towing the campers, um, bagging out the, uh, trips with the, uh, toy haulers and, um, the other fifth wheel camper, I'm averaging 12.2. Uh, my best average miles per gallon ever was 15.9, and that was in the uh, before configuration. Uh, best I've gotten uh, afterwards so far has been 14.2, but I want to qualify that by saying I have not run an entire tank on the highway with no regens, which is the condition the 15.9 happened in. Uh, worst miles to the gallon I ever got were 6.8 miles to the gallon, and uh, that was in the stock configuration. Worst miles to the gallon I got in, with the banks on there was 6.3. Uh, both of those times were driving uh, north back up through Illinois through the flats with strong headwinds. I think uh, the 6.3 was a worse strong headwind than the uh, 6.8. Uh, I think the 6.3 was an entire tank running into a 30 plus mile an hour uh, headwind. Locally, what I observe is typically 11.5 miles to the gallon. Um, that's, you know, just a lot of short trips and driving around uh, the uh, suburbs and uh, stuff like that. Uh, Afterwards, it looks like it has gone up a mile to the gallon. It seems to be getting around 12 and a half most of the time now. Um, on the highway, I would typically say I'd average around 13 and a half, and um, it seems to be trending higher um, at about 14. But again, I haven't had enough empty driving on here since I've been back to really put a solid number on that. Um, my guess is that if I'm running on the highway, I should probably be getting somewhere uh, upwards in the uh, mid-16s to high-16s. And I attribute that to the uh, uh, cold air intake more than anything else. Um, the Pedal Monster is just a sensitivity booster, and uh, it's not affecting mileage except for negatively if you get onto it too much too often. Um, the Derringer adds power, and adds, added power means added fuel, so you would expect that to cause a negative uh, impact. So let's take a look at some of the uh, numbers comparing the two trips as far as fuel economy and cost go. Uh, first trip, gas was run, or diesel was running around 311 on average, and on the second trip it was 335, so there was about a 7.7% .7 increase in uh, fuel price. My total fuel cost was up about 18%. Uh, I did drive a little bit longer and had some worse uh, wind conditions. So I would expect that uh, that would have caused the fuel consumption to go up and uh, cost me a little bit extra. I used 421.6 gallons on this trip versus 389 on the last one. Um, 
again, carrying a little extra weight and uh, adverse wind conditions on the way home cost me uh, quite a bit of fuel, I think, there. So at the end of the day, without the banks on there, I was averaging 7.75 miles to the gallon. And afterwards, on the second trip, I averaged 7.37 miles to the gallon. Um, the 7.37, again, is obviously going to be um, brought down a little bit because of how I was using the Derringer at first and using it at full power when I didn't need it, as well as uh, carrying the extra weight in the truck. Um, def usage was pretty comparable, um, 9.6 versus 10.3. Um, the miles per gallon of def went down a little bit, uh, went down from 314 to 300. Uh, the regens do go up quite a bit when you're hauling, and uh, you can see that in the next comparison I'm going to show you. Um, I've had three major trips with the with the campers. First major trip I took was when it was brand new. Uh, hauled the uh, Damon Escaper, which is an 11,600 pound gross vehicle weight unit uh, for 5,000 miles, um, or yeah, close to 5,000 miles around the country. And uh, then the second trip was back in uh, March and then uh, third trip was um, just recently here in December so you can see how the fuel costs have gone up over the time uh, you can see the total mileage I traveled on each trip amount of fuel I used on each trip and my average mileage now you can see that um, the towing the uh, Damon which is an 11,600 pound camper, I was averaging 8.6. And that dropped down to 7.75 with the Jayco Seismic and uh, 7.37 with the Seismic and the bank system. Um, the camper is a lot lighter than the 20,000 pound gross Seismic. Uh, it's also got a smaller profile and uh, because of that uh, extra weight and work that you're putting on the engine, the usage of the DEF was only 410 you know, miles per gallon, or was all the way up to 410 miles per gallon of DEF versus uh, 314 and then 300 on the last trip. Um, here you can compare the gross vehicle weights. Uh, the length, the uh, seismic is almost 47% uh, longer than the Damon was. The uh, width, it's 6% uh, wider, it's about 5 inches wider, and uh, it's a good uh, foot and a half taller. So it's got a much bigger profile that you're pulling through the wind there. So we'll see what some of these other numbers look like as I drive it under you know, normal empty conditions, and uh, we'll see how the bank's uh, system affects it under those conditions. Uh, again, I think the greatest increase in fuel economy, if that's what you're looking for, uh, was the result of putting on that cold air intake system. Uh, towing through the hills was so much more comfortable and accelerating onto the highway was so much more comfortable with that bank's Derringer on there and dialed up to six. I mean, it made such a difference and, you know, a lot less shifting in the hills. Um, a lot less worry about am I going to be able to get up to speed in time getting on that on-ramp again, you know. So that uh, definitely is worth it from the uh, standpoint of using it when you got big loads on. Uh, I haven't seen a big improvement or a need to use it in any other conditions uh, other than when I'm towing heavy and then using it selectively instead of leaving it out all the time leaving it out all the time did cost me about a mile to the gallon at the beginning of the trip where I didn't need it to be on. So uh, the gauge pods are great. The um, being able to keep an eye on all of your uh, temperatures and um, you know, whether it be the, uh, the water temperatures, the uh, trans temperature, the oil temperatures and uh, all your exhaust gas temperatures also has it on there all the time so you can see when it's in a regen mode and how close you are to getting one. Uh, that way, you know, you don't uh, accidentally shut it off in the middle of a regen and then have it continue or only partially regenerate. 
So a lot of great stuff and uh, nothing but positive stuff to say about all three of those components. So if you have any questions, hit me up and I'll do my best to answer them. And I will leave some updates in the comments as uh, time goes by and uh, let you know what changes as far as uh, best miles per gallon afterwards and uh, stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. hope it was helpful. And I will see you guys soon.